Hello and welcome everybody, King Dempsey bringing you some Torchlight 2. Um, what I'm going to be doing today for you folks is basically giving you a very basic tutorial on how to play Torchlight 2. So I will take you through character creation, I will take you through the basics of movement and combat, and I will take you through the basics of the interface and leveling up. Uh, so let's crack straight into it with character creation. As you can see here, we have four classes. The Engineer, the Ember Mage, the Berserker, and the Outlander. Now, basically, each class has a slightly different uh, specialisms, I guess you could say. Uh, the Engineer is a, a tank slash DPS who focuses on dealing, uh, you know, heavy hard hits with his big two-handed weapons. The Ember Mage is a mage caster class, uh, all about ranged combat and uh, possibly support. You have some support spells depending on how you specialise. Now, the Berserker is a two-handed DPS slash tank, all about fast hard hits with those two uh, dual wielding weapons. And the Outlander is a gunslinger slash mage, as you can see, wield guns and magic with equal skill. Again, another ranged class. Uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to pick an engineer as they seem to be the uh, sort of general basic class that uh, you play. Uh, they're the easiest class to play, so uh, why don't we stick with them? Uh, we'll go for a baldy, and hair colour doesn't really matter apart from his moustache. I'm calling this guy Tutorial Man just for the time being, why not? Uh, and then here we have the pet selection screen. Now, you have eight basic pet classes that you can pick from, and the differences between them are only cosmetic to start with. So, uh, picking a ferret over a panther doesn't give you any stat increases. Uh, for this, I'm just going to pick a wolf, why not? And I'm going to have a... Ooh, look at those red eyes. I'm going to have that wolf called um, Fluffy. We'll call him Fluffy. Um... And uh, as you can see, you have the uh, difficulty. Now, um, hardcore mode means that when you die, your death is permanent. So only pick this if you are elite or you don't mind crying and, and, and doing a table flip when your character dies. Uh, each difficulty, I mean, it's fairly self-explanatory. Casual is just, you know, you're just going for fun. Normal is you have a bit of challenge, but you don't need to be, uh, you know, familiar with the game too much to do well. Veteran is, is more for familiar players with RPGs and stuff. Now, if you've played Diablo 2 or the original Torchlight and stuff like that, uh, then I would suggest hitting Veteran because it gives you a, a nice challenge, uh, but isn't, you know, it isn't going to kill you every single dungeon you go into. Uh, and Elite is obviously a, um, you know, for the hardcore uber bros. Uh, so for the purposes of the tutorial, I think I'm going to go with Veteran uh, just to give you uh, a little taster of Veteran. Um, although I suppose if you're watching this tutorial, then you're most likely going to want to play on either normal or, e or casual, sorry. Nearly called it easy. Uh, we're going to skip this uh, cutscene because that's not what we're here for. We're here for, uh, for playing Torchlight 2. Uh, right, as you can see, you can zoom in nice and close, get a look, little look at your character. Look at his powerful stance. He's ready for anything, folks. Um, but obviously we're going to zoom out a little bit. I don't like to be out as far out as the Torchlight 2 interface allows you. I prefer to be a little bit tighter in. Um, let's give you a quick basic rundown of the interface. Now here you have your weapon. Uh, basically this is what's assigned to left click and this is what is assigned to right click. So if you wanted, you don't have to have your standard attack binded to left click. You can actually pop a skill if you want. Uh, and on right click you tend to put your skills. At the moment you only have one, but a very interesting feature is you can see the large one you have here is the skill that is currently active, but if you want you can put a secondary skill and switch between them using the tab key. So it's very easy to switch between two skills. I just had a little bit of lag there. Uh, as you can see this is a flame hammer. Uh, this is basically a DPS uh, and also a damage over time attack and also it generates additional blasts so anything else within the area also gets a little bit of a hit this is some uh, these are some horses to move around you click uh, the left mouse button just clicking around having some fun uh, but also you can click and hold if you don't want to constantly be uh, doing a bit of a click fest there um, now to attack 
which we will get into right now. Let's just accept this quest here. As you can see, questing's fairly uh, simple. You get gold reward, XP reward, or you get a uh, reward of items. So uh, we'll accept that quest, and we'll go and we'll get into a bit of combat. Movement's fairly self-explanatory, as I've just told you. But there is another aspect of movement that I need to show you in combat. Now, with combat, you can either left click on your uh, targets and it will go and attack them. Or, if you press shift, you'll stand still and attack. So, if you press shift and stand still when there's nothing around you, you'll still attack. So, um, that is something useful to know. Uh, we'll continue killing a few of these guys just to show you a little, quite a feel for the combat. Normally, uh, you can one hit a lot of basic enemies or it'll take you a couple of hits to take them down. Now, these are the very basic enemies that you'll meet. Uh, you kind of meet sort of uh, different tiers of enemies. These are the, are the cannon fodder, essentially. Uh, you'll meet slightly tougher ones throughout the game, but for now, we'll just show you why you are. And uh, there's some of the skills, as you can see, very effective. Your skills are going to be the uh, the bread and butter of, 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 uh, of what you're doing in Torchlight. Um, you know, your attacks, the later on in the game you get, the less effective your, your standard attack becomes. So, anyway, just to show you here, we have the Engineer Charge Bar. Now, uh, every skill has a different form of this charge, which I will go over in a, uh, in a different series, if uh, you want to watch that. I'm going to be doing a spotlight in each of the classes, but I'll just tell you what it does, essentially, is, um... Anyways, as I was saying, the Engineer Charge Bar, essentially what this Charge Bar does is once you have filled up the Charge Bar, you can consume a Charge Bar to perform a significantly more powerful attack. Uh, this is simply for the Engineer, it does slightly different things for each of the classes, but again, I will go over that in more detail when I do my class spotlights. Uh, now we shall continue on and here seems as good a time as any to show you the interface. Now if you press spacebar, you bring up your double menu system. On the left hand side you have your pet panel, character panel and arcane statistics. Your statistics is simply uh, some attack bonuses that you have, some uh, elemental shield bonuses that you have. Uh, and also it has your sort of statistics for the game, so monsters killed, monsters exploded and stuff like that, playtime. Um, so that window you probably won't be looking at too often. It'll be more the character panel and the pet panel. Um, now I'll explain to you the pet panel for now as I don't have any stat points to distribute in the character panel. Those are distributed when you level up. So the pet panel, you have your pet's inventory. Now what this is for is you put things into your pet's inventory and then you send him to town via this button to sell them. We can't send him to town yet because we haven't encountered the first town. Pet consumables, again it's the same thing, you pop consumables into his inventory and it will go off to town to sell them. Again, the same with pets. Uh, but you can also give pets spells, so um, when you get a spell scroll you right click it and you can pop it into your pet spell slots, which are 1, 2, 3, 4 there. And then the shopping list, this is an interesting feature. You add uh, amounts to the shopping list, you can shop for different items, it tends to be mana pots, health pots, and uh, the two types of scrolls. And if you send your pet off to town, he will buy them as well as selling his uh, gear. Now here is your inventory slot, pretty self-explanatory, spells, consumables and equipment, which you equip via right clicking and you'll pop it on. Skills, now this is where your skill trees are. As you can see for the engineer, you have Blitz, Construction and Edgiest, and each give you a slightly different way of playing the game. Um, I'll get more into that with my uh, class spotlight. And here is your questing. Again, fairly self-explanatory, shows you what your quest is, what you have to do, and what your reward choices are. Uh, now that we've had a little look at the interface there, we will continue on. Also, if you don't want to press spacebar, you can actually open any one of these tabs individually via these little uh, tabs at the side. Uh, oh, here we have a ranged class. We'll get stuck into this guy. We'll ignite the powder kegs and we will... Whoa! Right. Um, and I will take you through to the first town just so I can show you the basics of vendoring as well. Now, as you can see, I've just leveled up here, which is a very uh, uh, good way. Oh, very good way, of course it is. It's a good time for me to show you the leveling up screen, but we'll kill a few more of these enemies because uh, they are winding me up. We'll clear up this little area in the corner here and we will... Here we go, we'll take a moment just to level up. Uh, now as you can see there, my mana and my uh, health were getting a little bit low here. Here are your hotkeys. Now, uh, if you press the corresponding key on your keyboard, say 1, if you have a look here, I popped a health bot. 2, 
I popped a mana pot. And you can put various different spells or scrolls or pots on these uh, on these hotbars here. Now we'll press spacebar to open up our double menu system. We'll go into the skills tab and into the character panel and we'll distribute our stat points. As you can see, when you first start the game, the stat points uh, that you are given at the start are distributed that such so that it kind of gives you a little hints as to where you have to go uh, as an engineer. Um, every class needs mana, so you will put some points in focus, uh, because as you can see, any skill you use requires mana. Um, and, and to be honest, throughout the game you will be putting at least some points on all of these stats, but this kind of shows you where you have to put more of your stats than others. I'm going to put all five of mine into weapon damage, just because uh, I want some more weapon damage for the points of this tutorial. Now, just so that I can show you the uh, um, the tab to switch between skills, I'm going to pick Shield Bash as my other skill and pop it as my secondary skill. Now, as you can see, when I press Tab, I switch between the two. Unfortunately, I don't have a shield, so I can't perform Shield Bash, but we will uh, we will try and remedy that at a later date. Now, this is the first town, the Asterian Enclave. This is sort of your home base for the uh, very opening parts of the game. And uh, I will take you through the basics of what you can find in towers. Now here you have your general goods vendor. They will vendor you your potions and dynamite if you want to go dynamite fishing. Um, it's not particularly effective, but we will sell these items as well while we're here. Shift clicking to sell things. I'm going to sell that railman wrench as well. <clears throat> now these are your. this is your shared stash. If you put things in your shared stash, it will be shared between all your characters. So if you find a particularly good weapon for, say, an Outlander, but you're an Engineer class, well, if you put that in here, then when you create an Outlander, you'll be able to use it. Uh, this is a stash exclusively for your character. Uh, this is a target dummy. This is basically to see how hard you're hitting and, you know, what kind of... Uh, attacks you're doing now as you can see I have um, attacks in uh, orange which are my you know uh, effective attacks and if we uh, and the purple attacks are fumbled attacks now uh, these are attacks that you have messed up and uh, you can see by increasing your dexterity you increase your fumble recovery which reduces the damage penalty if you fumble an attack um, I'll show you my engineers charge while I'm here actually as I can show that now BAM as you can see, very effective attack there because I used my charge. Um, this is the blacksmith. This is where you buy weapon. Wow. Got some awesome weapons up in here. Um, at the start of the game, it's not really that worth buying weapons. It's probably better for you to just uh, pick weapons up as you go along. Now, we're going to buy a shield simply because I don't have one. And I want to show you shield blast very quickly before I leave. Uh, this is just a guy you can talk to. Um, now, the very last thing I've got to show you, actually, before I go. Uh, two things, actually. Here's your waypoint portal. Um, you can't actually use it as of the moment because uh, you don't have any waypoints. But waypoints are positions in the, uh, the greater world that you find that uh, you can teleport to via the waypoint portal. So when you come back to town, you don't have to go traipsing through the whole environment to get to where you were, you just use the waypoint portal. Now this guy is a skill respecker, you can uh, either spend gold or um, sometimes it'll do it for free when you're lower level to remove skill points and just redistribute them again if you uh, would like to do that. Uh, now we'll use the fishing hole. Now fishing is a very basic thing, once that little bubble gets within the circular fishing thing in the middle, you get a fish. Oh, caught a fish containing unidentified boots. Well, that's nice. Uh, uh, a random thing that you can get. You can sometimes get gear coming up through fishing holes. But we actually want to get a fish so I can show you uh, what fishes do. Come on. Let's have you, fishy. And here we go. Uh, we have caught a tunnel shark. Now, I'll show you identifying. Why not? As I'm here. Unidentified boots. Right click to use an identify scroll, which is in my consumables. There it is to identify it and uh, unidentified things are normally things with attribute bonuses and are normally rarer items so uh, they're, they're good items to check out. Uh, and here we have the consumable, a tunnel shark. Now as you can see it says right click to feed fish to pet and it will transform your pet into a mole beast for the tunnel shark fish. Um, this is a way of getting uh, different stats on your pet, this is how you do it. Different uh, versions of fish will uh, will give you different versions of pet, and different versions of pet will have different increased stats. Now, if we have a look at my 
pet panel here. We can see his damage is pretty good here, but you know, I, I didn't check what his stats were before, so I don't know what this has increased. Um, and that is it really, guys, for the basics of Torchlight 2. We'll do a little shield bash here. Why are, why are, why are? Um... So if you enjoyed this, folks, I'm going to be doing individual spotlights on each of the classes so you can get a little feel for what each class does, what each class is like to play, and what it specialises in. Um, I can't go up here because I'm not high enough level yet. Uh, and if you enjoyed that, I also have done a little sort of uh, first impressions video on Torchlight 2, and I will link all of these uh, either in the description or via annotations if you want to go and check them out, guys. Don't forget to rate and subscribe. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will speak to you next time.